God wants you to prosper, not somebody else, not someone down the street, but he wants you to prosper. He promises to be our exceeding great reward. God has a great plan for you. Third John, verse two, it says, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Well, hello, it's Dr. Shansa Haynes again with Heart Heart Truth Ministries. And I wanted to just make sure I came on to give you an encouraging word for the day. I don't know whether or not you're in the hospital or you're just listening at home, but here's your word for today. Let's bow. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we do thank you. We bless and we honor you for all that you have done, all that you continue to do, and all that you will do in the future. Thank you for being our champion. Thank you for being our savior. Thank you for being our defender, our rescuer, and our deliverer. And we need you in every single one of those capacities in this day. We'll bless you always. We'll honor you always. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give you thanks. Well, I've been trying to come to you today with a message, and um, there's been a lot of interruptions. We know how that happens, right? We have a schedule and we have a plan and we think that we're going to go according to that plan and then something comes in and it interrupts us. It stops us. It happens when you try to pray and all of a sudden you get tired. It happens when you've um, made your plan for the day for your business plan and then you get a phone call and you've got to redirect. Well, I've been reading Isaiah, the 36th and the 37th chapters, and that's where we're going to come from today. But because it's a large passage of scripture, I want to just kind of summarize it for you, but have you go back and actually read it. It is the uh, account of Sennacherib coming in with the, uh, the Assyrian king, if you remember. He comes in to try to seize um, Judah, and he comes in and 37th chapter ends up talking about his destruction, but it comes in with this. There's a strategy of intimidation and there's a strategy of psychological uh, warfare, if you would. You know the type. Those that come in and say, we're going to do this, this, and this to you if you don't bow down to what we would like for you to do. And if you don't follow our path of, of doing things that I'm going to come in and, and take over and we're going to uh, besiege your entire army and we're going to annihilate you and everybody that's there, they're going to eat their excrement and drink their own urine. That's exactly what they said in the 36th chapter. And he tells them that and, you know, well, he sends his royal spokesperson in to tell them that. And they tell all the people and they do it in such a in such a way. Uh, the language they used was Hebrew and they asked, do it in Aramaic so that we as leaders will understand. But the other people, the common people would not hear you. But they come in to intimidate and they want everybody to hear the intimidation. So that everyone is now scared and um, they don't know what to do when they're, you know, running in different directions. And, you know, rumors, right? The rumors start and all of a sudden you think this is um, the truth. And the next thing you know, somebody else has got a different rumor. But there's that psychological warfare to mess with your mind, to mess with your thoughts. And one of the things that he said, the royal spokesperson was sent to say because from Sennacherib, he was sent to say, what are you relying on? That was the question he asked, but then he continued on to say, oh, you've been relying on Egypt and they're not going to do you any good. And the Pharaoh there is not going to help you. And if you lean against this, you're going to hurt yourself basically in the process. And you've been relying on God, but where has he been? Uh, because Sennacherib and the Assyrian armies have been able to, uh, be, uh, captivate or cap make captive all these other people. And he lists a list of nations that they have gone against and they have been captured. And he says, we're going to do the same thing for you, but who are you relying on? Cause your guy can't do it. Hmm. We hear that a lot in the world today. Who are you relying on? Why are you paying attention to that? Oh, you guys are just so religious. Why are you going to church? Why are you doing these things? Why are you following that outdated book? And why are you doing the principles that are in there? It makes no sense. 
<laughs> and the Bible says that there will be those that come up against you. He says, but no weapon formed against you shall prosper in every tongue. Hear it good. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be condemned. Well, you know what? He says that, but in the 37th chapter of the book of Isaiah, see the leaders that the royal spokesperson had come to to give this decree and to do this intimidation, they go to Hezekiah, who happened to be king at the time. And they go in their sackcloth and ashes with their clothes torn because they're saying we're in such distress. We're disparaged because of what was said. And we don't know what to do, but you had given us a, a command that we are not to answer. And Hezekiah then goes to the prophet Isaiah and says, what shall we say? Well, one of the things that Isaiah says is the Lord said this. Now, remember, the royal spokesperson, based on Sennacherib's request, said, what are you relying on? But the spokesperson, or when Isaiah gets it in the 37th chapter, Isaiah tells Hezekiah, I am, um, Hezekiah goes before the Lord. He goes before the prophet of God first, and he goes before the Lord. And the prophet of God says, that, this is what the Lord says. He says, I am about to put a spirit in him that he will hear a rumor and return to his own land where I will cause him to fall by the sword. In other words, I'm going to take care of him based on what he wanted to say to you. Here's the thing to get from this. Yes, there will be strategies of intimidation. Yes, there will be strategies of psychological warfare that come in. But do like Hezekiah, spread out before the Lord. Bring it to the Lord in prayer. Let him take care of your enemies. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I shall repay. Don't try to necessarily take it into your own hands. And then when God answers, one, God knows everything about you. Um, even in that, he knew exactly what was in Sennacherib. He, he knows him better than he knows himself, just like he knows you better than he, you know yourself. But he says, I know, um, he says, have you not heard? Okay, so Sennacherib's spokesperson asks, who are you relying on? And then when God speaks, he says, have you not heard? I'm not going to threaten you. I'm going to make a promise. Have you not heard that I know you're down sitting and you're uprising? He says, you're going in and you're going out. He says, I know that you need to take root downward and bear fruit upward. I know I created all of the nations that you're so talking about that you have been defeated, but I created them. I have more ability than you. And because of that, I am the God that will defend and will deliver. Yeah, he says that. I want you to read it. The 37th chapter, the 35th verse, he says, I will defend this city and rescue it because of me and because of my servant, David. I will defend the city. He asked in verse 26, have you not heard? I designed it long ago. I planned it in days gone by. I have now brought it to pass and you have crushed fortified cities into piles of rubble. Their inhabitants have become powerless, dismayed and ashamed. They are plants of the field, tender grass, grass on the rooftops, blasted by the east wind. You know, just like the Assyrian army, Sennacherib was saying that he was doing all this. God says, wait a minute now, have you not heard that I was the one that designed that? And I allowed you to bring this down. He says, but I know you're down, you're sitting down. You're going out and you're coming in and you're raging against me because my raging against me, because you're raging against me and your arrogance have reached my ears. I will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth and I will make you go back the way you came. See Sennacherib's army as they were capt captivating people or putting them into captivity, they would put a hook in their jaw and bring them. And God says, no, I'm going to be the one to do that to you. 
my encouraging words for you today is there will be people that will come up against you. They will say things against the God that you serve. <laughs> be like David and Goliath. When that giant rises up, recognize that if they're coming against the armies of the Lord and they're coming against you as a child of God, God's going to back you up. And whether you use a little slingshot and a stone that will bring down a big giant, or whether you go before the Lord on your knees and you say, Father, I'm going to need you to come and rectify this situation. Know that vengeance belongs to him and he is the one that you should be relying on. And he is the one that you can depend on to defend you every step of the way. Just be mindful to be obedient to his word. Just be mindful to commit all of your ways unto the Lord. Just be mindful to understand that he loves you with an everlasting love and his desire for you is for good and not evil. So his word is true. His commands and his promises are available, but we have to also be obedient. When the intimidation comes, God will defend. When the psychological warfare happens, know what his word says so that you can use scripture against it. Don't become a legend in your own mind because he says his thoughts are not your thoughts. His ways are not your ways, but be committed to following the ways of God. Isaiah 36 and 37 show that others will come up and there will be those times when it does happen. But be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Thank you, God, for being our defender. Thank you, God, for always standing by. Thank you, God, for knowing before we even get there. Thank you that regardless of whether it was in our schedule or not, God, you can remove every single distraction when we bring it to you. Help us to not be arrogant nor prideful, but help us to come before you in the humblest of ways, asking for your assistance, asking for your help, because we truly do rely upon you. We thank you in advance. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. And Lord, for those who have been going through in this time with the sicknesses and the diseases and the losses, I ask that you comfort them and you be with them henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. And amen. God bless you. I'm Dr. Shanta Haynes. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Don't forget to set the notifications, the little bell, so that you will get an opportunity to know exactly when I put a new message out. Subscribe, like, and share. H, the number two, H, truth.org. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.